What's up, Internet? It's Cars and Coffee Dave here. I hope you're off to a great Monday. I know we are. We're out here at an undisclosed location uh, in Russia. We'll call it that for today. And we have two cars. One was designed in the late 80s. The other was designed more recently. However, they have uh, very similar power outputs. They have similar weights. They have similar styling. In, uh, in my book, that's called a competitor. So we're going to take a look at these two cars. We got a Dodge Viper, also known as the SR1. We've got a C7 Corvette in carbon 65 trim. And it's going to be a good day. So we're going to come check them out right now. On the right, a Carbon 65 edition. Now you might have seen this from Walker Chevrolet out of the event. These, those guys have been kind enough to bring us more than one of these in the last couple of months. Truly a stunning car. Now the big thing that I want you guys to take away from this today is the time. Um, the time between creating these. They look very similar. They feel very similar. We've got 465 horsepower backed up by an eight speed auto on the right. We've got about 450 horsepower in a six-speed T56 on the left. Both are very good looking cars, both have power, and both come in at around 36, 3700 pounds, depending on options and extras. And uh, you know, it's funny because this car right here was designed in 1989, the Viper SR1, by a guy named Tom Gale. Can I have the Viper please? Yes, you can. Come on down to Walker Chevrolet and uh, talk to those guys that can absolutely be yours. Um, but again, designed in 1989, um, it wasn't in, the world didn't see this car until 1991 when none other than Carroll Shelby drove it at the Indianapolis 500 as a pace car. So that was when the world first got to see the Dodge Viper. And um, we're gonna take a look under the hood there in a minute, see that V10 engine that Lamborghini helped design. Uh, Dodge was actually owned by or Lamborghini was owned by Chrysler at this time back in the 80s And that's why they were called in to assist So Bo you think you could help me out and uh, pop that bad boy open anything for you cars and coffee Dave. Thank you. I appreciate it So while Bo is going through that multi point process of opening the clamshell on the Viper, which is very involved We're gonna take a look at the carbon 65 so much more modern um, Much much more luxurious. You got a lot of creature comforts here and again, um, the, the Corvette has been in continuous design since way back in the day, since the 50s. So uh, you got a totally different different range of emotions that, that you experience when you drive these two cars. This one I'm going to tell you. So I was driven here in the Viper. I got to drive the Carbon 65 just a little bit. <laughs> and here's, here's the impressions, you know. Uh, this is a Swiss Army knife, much closer to obviously modern sports cars because it is one, that you can turn things on and off. If you don't want the suspension being super bumpy, you can turn it down and it's nice and luxurious. You don't feel everything in the, in the road. If you want it to be quiet, it can be quiet. If you want it to be loud, it, it can be loud. Um, the thing is, is the Viper is all of those things all the time. You've got the same basic information being displayed. Over here, it's coming from auto meter gauges that are located in the dash and uh, yeah get a look at those right there very analog very old school feeling but still it's comfortable um, I'm never gonna say plastic has aged well but this interior actually has it's done a pretty good job of of staying clean it doesn't look old and brittle it looks actually really nice and new and uh, you got your Dodge Viper shift knob there. This transmission is super stiff. Bo was uh, commenting on that on the way over here as he was driving it. And uh, there's a look at that Lamborghini inspired V10. Oh. Very nice. Lots of intakiness going on there up front. St extensive amount of heat shielding right here. All around fun. Um, but yeah, it, it never goes away. This car is always going to be in race car mode all the time. So I think what it comes down to, guys, is what is your personal preference? Do you want something that really is just for the weekends to have fun with, to go cruise around 50, 100 miles? Um, I guess that's the other thing is if, if I had to pick one to go on a road trip with, it would absolutely be the Carbon 65. Um, you know, for so many reasons, the, the comfort, the, the suspension, uh, probably getting some better gas mileage out of it. Uh, I would have to say that. If it was just for fun, uh, for the looks, for getting attention, and for all out, I guess, fun driving, it would probably have to be the Viper. 
you know, you probably couldn't be in it more than two or three hours, but that's okay, because that's not what it would be for. So the Carbon 65, I think, would have to be the winner of this competition in my mind. Um, you know, the, uh, the Dodge is an amazing design, a uh, timeless design that has stood up to the test of time for a while. In, uh, in an alternate universe, if you, if you know Star Trek and the Mir Universe thing, if there was only Corvettes in one universe, it easily could have been the Dodge Viper in another universe because they're so similar in what they do and the way they look. I'm gonna pop open the inside of this real quick. Give you guys a sense of uh, what the Corvette C7 interior is like. And then of course, I guess the big questions that I have to leave you guys with is there's two things. One, which one would you guys rather have between these two, the SR1 or a C7? And then two, if Dodge ever did bring the Viper back, would they do it as a mid-engine design? So that's something to uh, think about. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for today, guys. Thanks for joining us on this comparison between the SR1 and the C7. Hope you guys have a great day. If you're interested in either one of these cars, come on down to Walker Chevrolet, Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, visit their website, give them a call, and uh, you guys can absolutely make one of these your dream cars. Have a great day, guys. I'm Cars and Coffee Dave. Catch you next time. Yes, Alex, it is an auto, eight speed.